afternoon. Can I see your identification, please? Thank you very much. OK, lovely. Uh, now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Who do you spend the most time texting and why? Texting? Mm. Um, with my best friend. Uh, we have many things to talk and uh, I think uh, send mes text message uh, will, uh, can uh, help me to have more time to think about what I want to talk to her <laughs> and share our um, things. Yeah. When do you think you'll next send a text message and why? I'll, text, uh, I'll send a text message to my best friend to uh, tell her that I um, I did this test very well. <laughs> Do you sometimes prefer to make a telephone call instead of send a text message? Why? Why not? I'll make a telephone calls when I have to uh, make a quick, uh, quick conversation to um, someone like my mother or my um, friend at, in, in my university mm -hmm. to tell something really quick and uh, important, yeah. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one or two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Okay. Your topic is uh, describe a journey by car, plane, boat that you remember well. All right, so that's a minute over. And remember, you have one to two minutes, so don't worry if I stop you. Please begin speaking now. I had a particular journey when I was six years old with my family up north by car. Um, it was a very interesting journey and I, um, I was impressed by so many huge mountains. And I remember um, there was a river go through uh, one of the mountains. And there was also a waterfall uh, cascading down the side of the mountains. And um, I was impressed by many, many animals there that I've never <laughs> seen before in my city. Um, and the journey was, uh, um, the journey took um, most of the day. Although we uh, stopped to uh, stopped every now and then to uh, take a break and eat something before continuing. I've see, uh, I, I saw many, many big mountains and whenever I thought that I had seen the tallest mountain, there was an even tall, uh, even tall, an even taller mountains right in front. And I was a little bit afraid by the road because <laughs> I can see it into I can see down below the valley and I I'm afraid I was afraid if we fell off the road and <laughs> it was very impressive okay. I, all that what I can remember I really remember about that journey Explain why you remember this journey well. I guess this journey was important to me because it was the first time that I've been to uh, a different, a di very different place from where I used to live, and I have many interesting experience um, that I've never felt like that before. <laughs> All right, we've been talking about travel. Okay. And I'd like to continue to discuss with you uh, one or two more general questions related to this. Uh, first of all, 
let's consider reasons for daily travel. Yeah. Why do people need to travel every day? I suppose the main reason uh, is that are uh, to go to work, classes, or whatever, uh, whatever they need to go. And they um, have to attend a classes or their job. And maybe they uh, need to uh, travel to their office and stay there all day or as a part of their work. Mm -hmm. Visiting customers or clients or um, travel to another city for an important meeting. Uh, what problems can people have when they are on a daily journey? For example, to work or to school, and why? I suppose um, one of the most common ones would be traffic jams. Mm. Uh, many people travel at the same time at peak hours. and um, uh, Or maybe they uh, travel by bus, but they miss them and arrive at work a little late mm, and of course they uh, could be involved by in a uh, traffic accident uh, especially when they're driving and it can cause many problems okay thank you very much that's the end of the speaking test thank you I hope I passed this test <laughs> All right, so now that you've heard uh, on Japan, what do you think is the strongest point um, from that performance? What I really like is the way that she develops the topic uh, throughout her, her talk. I, I think she does it very, very consistently and uh, in a very interesting manner. Um, I love the way that she uses long, complex sentences and she uses some unusual vocab. I love hearing uh, these uh, topic-specific uh, collocations, these words that go together um, to make your, your language a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I really like. You know, something I, I realized after our sessions together, yeah. I realized you're, you're a guy that really loves um, details in the sense that you like you like the qualifying you know statements you like the adjectives you like the descriptions you like um, you know the relatives so that's quite interesting that's quite interesting yeah this yeah. is definitely something that all students should be aware mm -hmm. of that I always want to hear mm -hmm. uh, conditionals relative clauses and all of the tenses from the past to the present to the future um, so I will always be listening for that and uh, it's definitely something people should be revising and mm -hmm. practicing constantly. Mm -hmm. um, makes a in more interesting conversation. Definitely. <laughs> so, Andrew Pan was talking a lot about her journey. She was describing what she sees, you know, she was describing her experience. In terms of other people, when they talk about a topic like journey or traveling, yeah. what do you think they should be talking about? Okay, well, it's, it can be a very, very open topic. And in terms of IELTS, really, you can talk about anything in a, a part two topic. So um, again, the five W's are your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, talk about where you went, when you went there, who you went with, go into a lot of detail describing you know, your best friend who you traveled with and uh, the place that you traveled to, what were the special features of that place and uh, why did you go there? And then maybe move into the future and talk about whether you would like to go back there again or if it's inspired you to go to a different place on your, your next holiday. One of the questions that I get asked a lot, and I'm sure you guys ask, will ask, is, is the fact that you know, there are a lot of travel experiences, and a lot of the times, experiences may be similar to each other. So for example, I visit Hanoi, I see uh, you know, the mausoleum, I go eat street food. Yeah. Um, are those, are we, do we have to be afraid of things that can potentially be cliche or not interesting enough to I... the listener? It shouldn't matter in the IELTS exam, it shouldn't mm -hmm. matter, but I think it does matter because you're learning English in order to go and study maybe in another country or to study in a university here and basically you want to have interesting, engaging conversations. So I think that IELTS is a good chance to practice having those conversations and so I would try and encourage students to to pick on a topic that's a little bit unusual and, and makes them stand out mm -hmm. and, and, and talking instead about maybe some more unusual features or characters or things that people don't usually talk about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so that the conversation can be a lot more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Right.